Hey you guys, it's Danny, and welcome to January Wrap Up. So I'm hoping to do one of these every month. I used to do them and then I was like, that's boring and I stopped. And then I find myself like really missing, like sharing the things that I, I worked with that month and that I really liked. So I'm like, I'm just gonna do it again. I'm just gonna do it again. So we are gonna be talking about um, decks, of course. We're gonna be talking about journaling because I get a lot of questions about that. Um, my books that I've read and uh, the 30 day, of course, that we had talked about. Um, I pick a new one each month and <laughs> spoiler alert, I already love Februarys, I'm just saying. Anyway, so let's dive in first to the decks that I use, the modifications that I did, um, any kind of spreads that I've been using. So first up, the Dreaming Way Tarot. Now I'll put a link either up here or down below. Um, I did modify and create my own little bag and stuff, um, this deck. So this is a mod and, and the deck that I used. So Dreaming Way Tarot, of course, is whimsical and beautiful. It's got some great wintry vibes. Oh, like, look at those swords. They're just my favorite. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed using this for January. It really fit the vibe. And then I feel like I got to spend some extra time with this deck since I did modify it. Um, like I said, I'll put a link, but I, I changed the backs, I re-stamped them, I created a bag for it. So I was able to sit with this deck for quite a few days for <laughs> that purpose, but I also used it during those days. So I found it really beneficial and I'm really glad that I chose January to do that because I still feel like there's enough wintry vibes going on in Louisiana where it's like we're just starting to get our little spots of cold days that uh, it just really like set the tone for me. So I really enjoyed that. I used that with Earthbound Oracle and they looked phenomenal together. They really played off of each other well. And for me, I like, y'all know I like the aesthetics. Like that's duh. And like, I just wanted the whole vibe to be kind of like more muted tones. I like a fall, a fall palette, if you will. Um, but this even worked for that wintry vibe. So I really enjoyed working with those two together. Um, it's the first time I paired them like that because sometimes I'll pair and sometimes I'll go like months without taking out an Oracle deck, if I'm being honest, unless it's just like, a random one for the end of a client reading. And I say random, I always, you know what I mean? But like, I don't have that out and use it a lot. So that's what I decided to do this month is, okay, so I tried to do something and it didn't work, which was, <laughs> I tried to pick my decks for the month and then only use those this month. Like I gave myself like four of them, all with an Oracle pair. And I'm like, I wanna only use these this month. I can't do that. <laughs> and I don't mean that in the way of like, it, they're not enough. But when it comes to client readings, like I did the first few and I really enjoyed them. They, they went with the vibe. I picked them very easily. But then like towards the end of the month, there were some things that came up where I was like, none of these decks are gonna work. This It's just not the vibe. And I was like, why am I doing this to myself if I'm not enjoying it? So I was like, screw it and I went into my cabinet and I grabbed the right one and I did the reading and it's like I don't know if you guys go through that where like you you're intent on using a deck right I want to use this deck this is the one I want to use and then you try to pull comes out really weird doesn't make sense okay let's cleanse it set the intention again reword the question pull it out and it's just like it just doesn't feel right. Like something's wrong. Like it doesn't, it doesn't quite make sense. And it's like really way off. And it's like, you check the books. Maybe there's something that I'm missing. You, you, you know, you Google some meanings. You, you ask other people and you're just like, this isn't like, this isn't it. And then you change your deck and it's like, 
oh, okay. Well, obviously this is not where the message was. It's like, uh, that's kind of what showed up for me where I was just like, this isn't working. Like it's just not working. Um, so hard lesson on that. And that was the whole point. Like this year I planned on doing different things with my tarot and like trying to, um, utilize or like bring back some of the older decks that maybe I haven't been using quite often to see if they're still, they're still worth keeping and they're still, you know, speaking to me in some type of way or if I can let them go. That's kind of like how I wanted to kind of play this year is like try different things each month, but definitely have a set few decks where like I'm going to dive into them I'm going to modify them I'm going to do whatever so that's a long way of saying like I tried only using a set deck collection right for this month and that did it, it I can't for myself I feel yes but when it comes to client client readings no so there's that okay so let's move on <laughs> that was a long-winded thing okay so up next, oh, let's talk about this because so many people have been asking me how I like it, what I've been doing. So I grabbed this to use with the Oracle. This is the Terracle, ter Terracle, Tarot of Mystical Moments, yikes. And the Oracle of Mystical Moments. Didn't like them together. Okay, it's not that I didn't, okay. <laughs> It's not that I didn't like them together. I'm having trouble with the different cardstock, the different sizes. Like I read with them together and it's like, I, it just, I wanted them to be a perfect match. And while it works, it just wasn't my favorite. Like I just don't find that it read as well. However, I was having trouble with the Mystical Moments Tarot in general because the gilding and the size i just wanted to change it so what i did was i did use it quite a few times this month however i think i'm going to put it back into the rotation um for later on in the spring and come back but here's what i did i sat with it man i was a good girl and i followed directions you know lisa and uh don michelle talk about measuring before you cut all this good stuff and i'm one i'm a yolo like we're just cutting this we're just doing it i pick a line and we go for it doesn't work doesn't work especially you can notice now granted this was one of the first ones that i modified the dreaming way tarot so like they all different sizes <laughs> but this one oh snap can y'all see this i got it really good so I didn't follow any lines on the back. I literally took like a 16th off of the top and an eighth off of the side, which did help. And you can still see the whole back. I was going to come in to here, but I felt like I was going to miss out on some of the images, right? Like I was going to miss out on some of the elements. I would have almost had to, cause I was like, let's make it the same size as the Oracle but I would have literally had to shift the size around. It's so shiny. Shift the size around to get what I needed. And I was like, it's just gonna be, like it's gonna be a whole mess and it's gonna take forever. And I just wasn't, it was, it was a lot of shit for a dime, right? But I managed to get it to where you can still see very well. Everything was even. I didn't lose anything per se on this and I really did like the way that it came out because it it made a difference just in the feel of it in my hand I feel like it's easier to grasp and like y'all I have big hands like I have big hands and like I can just grab this so imagine what it was initially and then I went ahead and I did where's it at some brushed corduroy distressed ink along the sides and I love the way that it came out because it, it makes it like super vintagey. So even if you see the edges, like it just kind of flows. 
So I really do enjoy it. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna revisit this because I feel like it wasn't, it wasn't the experience that I wanted. So I modified it and I'm going to revisit it. So yeah, I pushed the Oracle of Mystical Moments off to the side almost immediately. I used, um, the earthbound oracle instead but for you guys who don't know this is the oracle of mystical moments like so like i wanted them to be this size <laughs> they are standard tarot size same style same title and border at the bottom you know, it just flowed so well. Not as shiny. You could even see my ring light, but it's not like the other one. So beautiful. I just wish they would have done it the same. That's where it felt like a set. I don't know. Say lovey. It's so beautiful, and I'm going to revisit that. Up next is... the ocean dry tarot now this is not out yet i'm not going to show too much just some little some little tidbits um this is a prototype deck that i am using and um is going to be up on kickstarter sometime this year so uh exciting i use this one alongside the wild unknown archetypes deck which i also did a modification on so I went ahead and wrote all the keywords and titles that went along with this deck. Thank you to Tammy Pie <laughs> for uh, taking pictures on her Instagram of what she did and how she modified hers in like the same way. I loved doing this i love taking the time to write the keywords and really let those meanings sink in so what i did was if you've ever seen the i think i have it right here yep if you nope <laughs> that was not at all where i thought it was <laughs> okay if you've seen the guidebook it has some keywords up here usually like two or three and then at the bottom here, we have when light, when dark, and then go deeper. So what I did was I took these keywords as well as go uh, light and dark, and I put them around. All the way around. So I have the titles in capital letters here, and then everything else kind of in lowercase when up and down so i really enjoyed taking the time to do this it took a long time but it was worth it like there wasn't a moment where i was like this is dumb why did i decide to do this because have you ever had modifications like that where you just like this was a horrible idea and now i have to finish it that wasn't like this you know it wasn't um or this wasn't like that I can't talk. We're in a bad position today. So, yeah. Great process. Really enjoyed working with these two together. Which, again, if I'm not mistaken, was also her idea. She asked the maker, Colin, to show the deck beside the archetypes. Y'all. Yes. But my video on this will be coming out later. Um, closer to the time of the Kickstarter. So I'm just like utilizing it and going through it and reading the guidebook and stuff just so I can get a really good review to post up for when it's time. So anyway, last set that I used this month was the Revival Art. And oh no, come on. The only one I didn't grab. Can you excuse my loud ass chair yeah anyway <laughs> i use the revival art and pear tree court which is the one that i created so these two alongside each other 
y'all. I use this most of the month because I was obsessed. I was obsessed. I mean, I'm normally obsessed with revival art. Let's be completely honest. But the way that these two read together, like they complemented each other so well. And it's not the same style in any way, shape or form, but the vibe of it, it's like the light in the dark almost. Like you have all these rich tones and then these very light tones that just, oh my God, y'all. I didn't put it down, if I'm being completely honest. I used them together for big spreads, like year ahead spreads. It was one of my favorite things to do is have those two together. I used them with um, my root spreads and I would like purposely have them together and pull like, I never just did tarot with revival art by itself this month for myself. It was always paired with it because I just felt like it, I don't know, it meshed so well. It's like my favorite pair. I don't know if I'll ever use anything else again, but it was a really good pair. These two were the stands out this month and something that I think I will go back to quite a bit um, in the future because I just loved the dynamic of it. The only other deck that I really feel like that with the revival art is the super oracle. There's something about the kind of like cream colored vintage background with those like etching styles with this art that really just like chef kiss. So yeah, those are my favorites. So those are the decks and the mods that I did this month. We are 18 minutes in. I might have to cut some of this out if I can. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about some journaling that I did. So here we go. Here's some stats, some stats. I have, well, let me keep that right there. I have my stuff open so I can talk to you guys. Okay, so I have my TN for January. I, you know, I have my main page. For the back here, you can see that I actually did utilize it really well. I have my decks here. This is my coloring. You can see how well that went. <laughs> We'll talk about that in a little bit. I added a little place for reflection. We have some goals, which I did manage to strike out. Oh my goals, yes. Very rare um, appointments. Um, and then uh, my books, which we'll talk about next. Um, so I really did, I, like I just enjoy this page because I can fill it in at the very end or like at the very beginning and it's not too much pressure it's not too much craziness now when it comes to my weeklies here's what i learned okay they're just plain pages like i feel like i need lines <laughs> like i want either some dots or a grid or some you know lines in there so i can write on because i just find myself like I mean, like, I know this is, like, to be messy, but, like, I don't like looking at it. And I think that's kind of a bummer. So, I mean, I'm still using it, but I don't, because I don't know what I want to do to fix it or how. I haven't decided, but, like, if I have to say anything, because this is the first time I had the weekly like this. Um, I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, as far as for the rest of my journal, I've been really liking it. I did, okay, so the Instagram content, I didn't use so, so much because I kind of have a, um, like kind of like a, not really a theme. Like I don't like, today I post about this and today I post about that. And then tomorrow I'm gonna put, like I don't really do that as much. I kind of have a guideline. Like I make sure that I have tarot on my Instagram, which if you don't follow me, I'll put the links to both of mine there. I don't do as much on Witch in the Wild. I still do, but not as frequently as I do on uh, the Danny Mystic. But like, I don't have a specific thing. I just have like on every like eighth picture is a picture of me. I make sure that I always have pictures of me because I feel like it's important to, you know, connect with people. That's my face. 
if you haven't gotten tired of it yet. Anyway, so I haven't been utilizing it a whole lot. Now, at the beginning of this month, there was a couple of things that like I wanted to make sure that I put on my Instagram. But if I'm being honest, I th thought I would get my shit together and like pre-plan. Yeah, that's not it's not going well. Um, but I'm still keeping it, like, I'm still going to try. Like I said, I did already this month have a couple of key things that I wanted to make sure that I put on there. But we'll see how that goes. But my YouTube content, I find myself utilizing. Because um, I try to post at least once a week on Wednesdays. But I would say, like, I don't want to hold myself to that. But I kind of do. Right? So I've been trying to pre-film and, like, set things up to where even if... I have it set like if I have something else that I want to get out that day I can just like push it down I am doing really good on my ideas I love these idea pages because like I split them up like walkthroughs and just regular stuff ideas that I'm toying with um, my blog is a joke I got a few <laughs> brain dumps I y'all I'm trying one day I'll get my shit together then I have my expense stuff like you can see um, I have all that done here at the bottom. I really enjoyed this. I filled up the whole, like the whole chart on, um, January, but that's kind of normal for me. And then I do, um, a lot of big purchases in January for the year so I get my stock of boxes and bottles and all kinds of stuff so I'm hoping that I don't I mean I'm hoping that I don't fill up the expenses every month but I'm thinking that if I do if I have something that's really intense that I may be able to kind of add like a flap in here if I need to because like some months are obviously going to be bigger than others especially if it's like a bunch of little things that I'm like having to get like a piece here, a piece there, um, things that I'm trying. So I, I think it's going to be very helpful because I already feel like I got my shit together with this because I normally like this year, I have a box of receipts that I have to go through because taxes are terrible. Okay. So, and then of course I just have my list and my notes and stuff like that. So that's how my new setup is going. I'm, I'm enjoying it. There are still some kinks that I feel like I need to work out. Um, but for the most part, I'm digging it, right? I'm digging it. Um, other journals, just a little blip here. I do have this one. Um, I talked a little bit about it on Three Fat Readers. Ooh, do you see that? It's cold in here but not cold enough for the heater because I had the heater on and then I was starting to get hot, but like my feet are still cold and that, but like I generate a lot of heat, mm, whatever. Anyway, so I've been doing all like bigger spreads and regular journaling in here. Um, then I will flip to my other traveler's notebook with my tarot spreads. So you guys, this is a closer view. You can see I have my little tarot stickers that I made. I got asked, I got sent a lot of emails, a lot of messages about offering these in my shop. And guys, if that's something that you're interested in, I'll definitely put these on my shop. Um, I, what I do is, I'll show you the paper. I set it up in, I cut mine so I could fit them in my little thing but like the top row has like up to 13 13 is a lucky number for me it's lucky I loved 13 okay so I got 13 quite a few of those so you can have those bigger spreads then it goes down to 10 and then on the side I'll like shove like three cards you know like one two three and then it kind of goes that way towards the bottom like I have 10 to one two three and then I have eight and then five and then I think these are, what were these? Were they just six? I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tripping. I had to stop and count that. Did you see that? Anyway, um, these are all six card. These are all five card, one and two. Because I figured that we do a lot, at least for me, I do a lot of like 
one and two card spreads, three card spreads, a lot of fours and fives. So I tried to get a mix and it's usually like a full sheet. I just cut mine in half so that I could fit it in my little thing. So I shoved that in there. So it fits. So that's what I'm starting to do. I'm trying to transfer all of my spreads into this notebook in one space. Could I use them? Could I, could I use them a lot? Cause I use them a lot. Then my little tarot journal, I started this in January. And so I have been really loving this. So these are ones that I will print out. Now we talked about like, oh, well, how do you get this in there? Um, some people use um, those little photo printers. I use my regular inkjet printer. It's super crappy, but it's fine. I mean, like if you get, if you kind of look up close, it is, I don't even know if you can see that. It's, it looks blurry. It is blurry. <laughs> it's blurry. But you can't see that from afar. Look at how beautiful it is from afar. Anyway, but I did use this as kind of like some touching base points. So again, I don't do, I don't pull daily cards. I, it's not a, an everyday practice for me, but I'm trying to make it more of a few times a week practice for me because I feel like if I don't, then sometimes I'll just forget to sit and make time for myself and do something like this. I love to journal. I love to create things and I love to sit with my cards. So I'm making it a point to at least touch base one to three times a week. You know what I mean? Like I want to be able to, um, to make sure that I'm touching base and sometimes I'll pull it and write it in my other notebook. And then I come in and I do a short version here or, you know, after I've sat, I talked about this one again on that three fat readers, I'll be sure to put a link, but I talked about this card. Like I pulled it that night, but then I sat with it and then I wrote about it the next day. So it's just, um, I feel like it's definitely adding to my tarot practice, my personal one. So then of course I have my bigger ones, as you can see those together and then on to February. So I did a few, not an overabundance, but enough to make me feel like I'm being creative in, in my spaces and something to actually see because old school, I literally just took and wrote or my old tarot journals as, as you've seen in some previous videos I would decorate it and write it but I wouldn't have the cards on there and I just thought that maybe putting the cards and creating something with them would just be a lot more fun but I also didn't want to go buck wild with it because I'm not trying to you know print out and cut out cards every day. Like that's not gonna happen. So I just wanted something more feasible. And I found that doing this and not putting a, you have to do X amount, like as long as I'm doing at least one a week, I want a goal to do three, but if I at least do one, I give that for myself. Like I don't wanna get myself in a rut where like, number one, I feel like I have to, so then I get paralyzed because I don't. Or I push myself through and I don't, need it or I don't want it and then it becomes a chore and something that I don't want to do so then initially I mean eventually I'll give up I don't want to do that so this has worked really well for me and then oh I don't have the last one in there but I do have this that's my sketchbook okay so that's it for journaling that is it oh one other thing so you know the enabling king and queen dustin and lisa y'all know they got me i got a fountain pen cheap one i got this at michael's and i used my 50 percent off coupon so i like paid four bucks for this i'm obsessed i get it i totally get it now i'm really a sucker for like fine point and being able to like i don't know feel it so i am liking the fountain pen they may have, they may have swayed me. And I like the idea of non-disposal. You know what I mean? Like there's like sustainability in it. Really, 
really nice. I really do like it. I was like, I'm not getting into something that I'm spending all kinds of money and I'm not. This was cheap. I grabbed me one more because I wanted a finer point. Tapping out, I'm tapping out. So I'm not saying that I'll never buy it again, but I am saying that I'm tapping out low price for now. My other one was like 11 bucks, okay? So that's where I'm at with that. <laughs> okay, so up next, let's talk about books. Oh my God, happy Mardi Gras, look my little straw. Jet Coffee is, I'm pretty sure I talked about them before. They're a local coffee shop. They have king cake coffee right now. Mic drop. It's Mardi Gras season and I'm living for it. So I read two books this month. Uh, I started three more, two of which I've already finished and it's the 3rd of February. So we'll save those for next month anyway. Um, but I read The Magicians by Lev Grossman. And I also read Loving What Is by Byron Katie. So The Magicians, I really did like. Okay, like I want to say it's a four star, but if I'm if I'm really being honest with myself, it's a three. But I really wanted to love it more, but I still really did like it. You know what I mean? Like I love the idea of a magical school, especially one that's a little bit older, right? We're talking more like college vibes. There's no... Uh, it's not PG-13, right? It is an adult book. But there were some aspects that I wish moved quicker. Like the whole like... I wish there was a little less of the college part. Like some of it is really relevant. And I like how it builds the relationships between all the characters. But I also feel like there was a lot of missed space because of what happened afterward you know what I mean like I wanted more of the adventure because I feel like it was literally just like kind of like a stop on the way but I understand that we had to see it going forward in the series this is a three book series so this is the first book so I would definitely I would give it a three but is it worth reading yes would I read it again yes so like I said it's not quite a four because of the way the story unfolds for me um, and kind of what I wanted out of it. I wasn't sure what it was about, but like I, I once I realized I wanted more, right? Um, so definitely a three, but worth reading. And there is a Netflix series. Um, I, I have not watched it yet. I really want to finish reading before, but now my third book is on hold. So I might just start watching it anyway. Anywho, <laughs> anywho let's go on to the next one. So Loving What Is by Byron Katie. I'm going to give this one a three, a solid three, um, only because I thought, I thought going into this book that it would be a little different than what I've already seen or read or watched from Byron Katie. So she has this, um, this little system about asking questions and kind of sitting with what is right kind of flipping things around upon yourself um if you're interested her work is incredibly interesting and it's really profound and it really does change your perspective on so much but everything that was in the books like i watched the interviews that she kind of transcribes and i've already watched um, her describe some of these things and yes it is basic and it is repetition that's kind of what it's all about but I guess I was looking for something different out of the actual book that like you don't get from YouTube right from like random little articles like I, I thought there was going to be more to the book than just the regurgitation of the interviews I guess and like putting it into practice I appreciated putting it into practice but I don't know, I guess because I had watched so much already that I was expecting more from the book. So maybe I came in biased and maybe that's why I like, I just like I read the whole thing, but like I wasn't, I don't know. I don't feel like I gained anything new, if that makes sense. That's just my perspective. Is it still great? If you haven't heard of Byron Katie, look her up, read the book, read the book first if you want to read the book. Um, but if not, go watch her YouTube, her conferences, you know, look her up. She's fascinating to me. Fascinating. 
Um, but like I said, I came from the other side to the book instead of going to the book and then going to the other side, right? So maybe that caused that bias in me where I'm just like, well, I didn't know this. You know what I mean? So maybe that's why. So those are the two books that I finished in January. Um, now, after those two, I started Nightmare of Neverland. That's by Todd C. Farron. I believe that's how you say it. Um, I started that one. I also started The Magician King, which is the second um, magician's novel by Lev Grossman. And then I also started Astrology for the Light Side of the Brain. I'll put the information down below for those. Um, those are the ones that I started in January. I've already finished the first two. And I'm reading, I'm still reading the second one. So February, I should have some more. Um getting going so those are the books that i read for this month so i don't have any like book goals like numbers of books that i wanted to read this year like last year i wanted to read at least 25 i think i made it to 23 um but there is something that i am trying to kind of bulk up on this year and that's like physically being able to read more books so i was like only physical in my hand books for the longest time I avoided audiobooks like The Plague. I don't know why. The joy of listening to someone tell you a story is like base level excitement for me. <laughs> like I love I love telling stories and I love hearing stories and it's such a deep thing for me. And I was like, why did I avoid this for so long? And because I am busier than I've ever really been now you know I don't have as much time to sit and read and I haven't been carving out that time and it's like while I've always thrown in some physical books in the past like I the past two years I've really relied heavily on audiobooks just to get those in because I'll listen to them while I'm working, while I'm sitting in line to go get um, my little girl from school, while I'm going to the grocery store, we have a trip somewhere. I I'm, I'm able to listen where I'm not able to sit and read, although I could probably sit and read when I go get linen, but anyway. So this year, my main goal is to at least physically read one book a month. So I'm carving out time each month to do some physical reading. Will I always finish that book in that month? No, because if, if I'm reading a bigger book, again, I'm trying to carve out that time. So I'm making time to do it, but I might not always have one. Like this month, I started reading two physical books, but I didn't get to finish them this month, whereas I got to finish two of my audiobooks. So next month, um, I'll be able to talk and show those if they're not library books or on my Kindle or whatever. But like, um, that's my only goal for books this year. So is there anything else that I want to talk about now that we are almost 50 minutes in? <laughs> okay. Oh, 30 day. Duh. Okay. So, so in January, I chose coloring from my little jar of 30 day and it did not stick like okay I started out really strong and I had a lot of fun at first so especially with my little swear word coloring book gotta have some fun in it um I would sit down, I would color. Lennon thought it was hilarious that there were bad words in my notebook. I mean, in my coloring book. Um, she would sit and color with me sometimes, but I guess I thought it was going to be a little more meditative and a little more um, sort of relaxing and artistic in a way. And I don't know, I just found myself getting really bored really quickly. And I really gave it a good shot. Um, but halfway through the month, I was just like, um, it's not as fun. Now, I would color little bits and pieces throughout, you know, a sprinkling through the month. But like, I never sat down to color after the first couple weeks because it just didn't, it didn't do for me what I, what I expected it to do. But I did give it a good try. And it's one of those things like I am doing that this, this whole year. I'm trying to figure out 
you know, and try new things and see what works for me and what doesn't. And so it's just one of those lessons where it's like, I really did try just like I did with the, um, the way that I wanted to use my tarot cards this month. I gave it a try. It didn't work. I'm not going to suffer through it. I think that's the main thing. I usually will suffer through something and I'm not doing that again. <laughs> At least not if I can help it. Right? Like I don't want to suffer through things. I want to try new things, really give it a try, even past the point where I'm like, I don't know if this is for me. Well, then I continue to try until I'm sure that it's not for me or that I'm sure it is for me, right? So it's not that I'm trying to give up on things, but I am going to do them to a point where I know for certain this is not something that I enjoy more so than I'm being lazy that day and don't want to do it. You know what I mean? So I really did give coloring a good shot and it's not that I don't like coloring, but I don't think it's the right creative outlet for me because it just, it felt like a chore. Like it really did versus something fun. I liked to sit down and color with my little girl, but even sometimes she was like, I don't want to color. I'm like, oh, you don't have to color. Like, I'm just going to color for a little bit. And she's like, okay, you know, like it, it's not her thing either all the time. So if that was a good try later coloring. So this month is drawing and I'm having a spectacular time. So I did create myself, like I said, at the, at the end of this one, I did create myself a sketchbook specifically for this month. And I will have a video up in the next few days showing how I did that. And it is going swimmingly well. I am enjoying the hell out of this. I've been doing some skill shares, which is also a big goal for me throughout the year is to do at least one skill share every month, um, if not more. And I've already done one this month and I'm halfway through another one. So really, really loving this because it's helping me expand while I do my normal little drawings and sketchings like whenever I want. Um, I am going to be adding in some of the skill shares that I do into this little sketchbook so that I have it all for the month. And uh, if this goes well, I'm maybe it'll be something that I continue to do and continue to make for, for every month or until I fill it up. I did make enough pages for the month. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, other than that, you guys, I think we're done rambling and we're done talking. So if you really like these kinds of videos, let me know. Is this something that you enjoy? Um, is it too long winded for you? Let me know. I really want to know what you guys think because I have so much fun making this content for you guys, but I want to make sure that you're enjoying it too. So let me know in the comments. Um, if you are looking for me, um, to book a reading, my Etsy shop, my Instagrams, three fat readers, all of that are in the descriptions below. I'm going to try to put as much of the things that I've shown, um, in this video, I'll put links to those below. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I think that's it, you guys. So if you like this kind of videos, make sure you give it a like. Um, if you want to see my content, make sure you just you subscribe. I almost said describe. You can describe me to people if you want to. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> so if you want, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you want to get notifications for every time I post, make sure you hit that bell. And I will see you all very soon. I'm sending you all my love. Mwah! Later, Gators.